In addition to coding, Elizabeth also created memos to record her thoughts as she was working through the articles and analysing them. So if I open up the overview of memos table, you can see that there are several memos that she created through the process. I'll do that from the report's main menu. You can see in the origin column that many of the memos were free memos at this point, but also the document memos that we looked at in the earlier part of this video are listed here together. Free memos are independent, meaning that they're not connected to any code, document or segment. Although you can see that this one was created in the document, and we can see that in the background of the screen. From the overview of memos table, it's easy to create a new memo at any point just by clicking on the new memo icon here. Then we have the option to give it a name and also to assign a type. I'll just use the exclamation mark for now. If I want to add a label for the type, then I can just add that in here. When I close that memo down, it will be listed in the table and the table can be sorted by any of the column headers. I'll just sort by title so that you can see that. One example of a memo that Elizabeth created whilst coding is this one, Problem of Sameness. So I'll just open that one up and we can see that she wrote the first section of this memo on April 30th, 2015, which recorded her thinking at that time. And then again in February 2016, she added more to the memo. At times, Elizabeth copied text from Microsoft Word files that she'd already written and pasted it into memos. You can see in the overview of memos table that any type label that's assigned is listed in this first column, and again the memos can be organised accordingly. The memos with the red L icon are those that she organised by using the type label literature, whereas the blue ones are about research process, and the green ones are about analysis. After Elizabeth had coded all of the articles, she then organised the codes into initial categories, which she did from the code system. At this point in her process, none of the codes had these prefixes that we can see here, and adding these prefixes was the way that Elizabeth organised the codes that she had created into categories. She did this by right-clicking on each code and choosing the rename option. I'll just do that for this one here, ambivalence. And I'll just remove the prefix so that you can see how easy that is to do. All of the codes initially didn't have any prefixes, so were just listed alphabetically in this way. But Elizabeth wanted to organise the codes in a way that represented itself in the code system list, and prefixing was the way that she chose to organise them, because it's always possible to sort the list of codes alphabetically, so that all the codes listed together according to their categorised prefix, as you can see when I scroll down the code system. Elizabeth could have done this organisation by creating a top-level code for each category and moving the relevant codes to hang underneath it. So I'll just show you quickly how to do that. Back at the top, I'll just right-click on the code system and create a new code. And then I can move codes and hang them underneath. So they appear in a little hierarchical group. She could have done a similar thing by organising the codes into sets that represent each category. And I've done that down at the bottom of the code system just to show you using the dialogue theory example. So if I open that one up, you can see all of the codes related to dialogue theory are also grouped using the shortcuts that the sets create. So there's lots of ways to organise codes. It's just that Elizabeth decided to do so by prefixing because she wanted to clearly see the category which she had signed to each code in the code name itself. For this code, clear goals and grounded rules, the prefix chal was used to represent challenges. And Elizabeth used this prefix because she had noted when authors discuss clear goals and ground rules, they discuss them in terms of the context of there being a challenge for interfaith dialogue either in terms of developing them or because they contested that interfaith dialogue did not go very well if there were not clear goals and ground rules. Either way, clear goals and ground rules seem to be a practical challenge of interfaith dialogue. So Elizabeth renamed the codes according to these prefixes and you can see them appearing in the list, so that when the list view is sorted alphabetically as it currently is, 
All the codes relevant to each category are listed together. The final phase of this first stage was for Elizabeth to write the first draft of her literature review. The way she went about this was to extract literature by category. Every code that was created in phase two was outputted with their coded segments into a Microsoft Word file, and Elizabeth did this according to the categories. Again, there are different ways of doing this. I'll just show you two options. First of all, we could right-click on the code system and ask to see an overview of all the coded segments. If we then sort by code, as is currently the case, then we can select all of the coded segments that are relevant to one category and then choose the export option at the top right of the window. You can see that there's various options to choose from in terms of whether you want to bring further information along with the coded segments. I'll just click OK and show you what that file looks like inside Microsoft Word. So here we have the file with every coded segment and you can see the code and the document that each coded segment comes from. An alternative way would have been to first activate the codes that she was interested in. I'll just take a few of the challenge codes to show you this process and also activate all of the documents. Make sure that we've got the Retrieve Segments window open, which gives us the information we've asked to within MaxQDA. And then we have the same export option here to export the Retrieve Segments, and that will generate the same output as I showed you before in Word. What Elizabeth then did was to have the exported information open in the Word file adjacent to a separate Word file into which she wrote up the first draft of her review. At the same time, she also referred to the relevant memos that she had written. In this way, she was able to refer to the coded segments that had been exported together with the articles they came from, as well as the writing that she had made during the process, all of which informed the writing up of her first draft literature review.